What it do, Ski Sun Duelist? It's your boy YFGM Hip Hop Reviews, and on this album review, it will be J. Cole's second album, Born Center. Now, I did a review on this before, but something happened with my video footage, and I'm kind of ticked off right now because I said some great, great things. So I'm going to try to repeat those things over. So if I mess up and if I'm looking on my screen, Please excuse me, guys, because I put a whole lot into that last video, and I'm just kind of ticked off right now. But I'm going to get this review out again, and hopefully this video would not mess up. Now, maybe I'm going to, you know, go through this slowly, you know, so I can get everything out right. Now, Born Center, where can I start off at? Okay, I haven't decided this is better than his first album. But I'm feeling this. I loved his first album as far as the debut, and I love this second album, you know, as his, as a his sophomore album. And by far, from the albums that I haven't heard, Kanye West, and I have to finish listening to Mac Miller. As of right now, this album is better than Kanye West Jesus album. Now, if you guys don't know, I did an re album review on that. Please check that out. Please. Um, this album, it, 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 overall, you know. It's, it's 16 songs, okay? It's 16 songs. And matter of fact, let me just let me just go through the songs right now. I'm going to read you guys the songs right now as we speak. Okay, number one, Illuminati. hope I said that right. Then he goes to a skit, Kearney Sermon. Then he goes to track three, Jay and the Snakes, um, Power Trip, Mo Money, Interlude, and then Trouble. I love that song. That is my song. Number seven, Runaway. And then number eight, She Knows with... Amber, dude, where's her name? Where's her name? Where's her name? Where's her name? Oh, well, I can't. Amber, Amber Kaufman. And then he goes to number nine, Rich Niggas. I love that song, too. And then another skit, Where's Jermaine? Mike Epps is very funny. And then number 11, Forbidden Fruit featuring um, Kendrick Lamar. Um, then 12, Chain and Day. I believe Kanye West did some production on that. And honestly, I think um, somebody, Timberland did some production on Born Center, I believe. Um, but anyway, number 13, Ain't That Some Shit, that's an interlude, number, um, 15, well, number 14, Crooked Smile, Future TLC, I love that song, I get into that, and number, nine, uh, 15, Let Nas Down, and then number 16, Born Center, featuring James, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name, and then if you got the bonus, the deluxe edition, you have Miss America, New York Times, Is She Gone Pop, Niggas Know, Sparks Will Fly, okay, now, the way this album start off, Illuminati is dope, you know. Well, well, first of all, let me just say this. J. Cole on this album, he seemed more hungrier. You know, he just seemed like as if he's still an underdog and people, it's like he feel like people is not giving him respect. So he had to come out and attack this first, this this album. And, he, and damn it, he attacked this first song. He attacked it very well. I mean, I'm going to just get right into it. Um, Now, the first song, Illuminati, I'm not going to go through the whole track list. I'm just going to. Talk about a couple of songs. Voluminati. Um, it sounds like a, a, a choir heavy, you know, track pretty much. Like it just sounds like some got some churchness into it, you know. Um, he sampled Notorious Biggs Juicy by Lupin Biggs, infamous line, um, Born Center, the opposite of a winner. For those who don't know, go listen to it. And I love how he did that because it just fit right into the basically the the title of the album. And just it fit in with this title of the first song, Voluminati. Now, in Voluminati, you know, he talks about a couple things in this song, you know. He kind of stirs some controversy in the first verse when he uses the word faggot and, and, and spraying him with an AK. And I'm going to just read the lyrics to you guys, and I'm going to just talk about that a little bit. But, um, yeah, man, he caused some controversy with that, and, and I loved it because he was playful with it, and he was just being real with it. And I'm going to just read some of the stuff that he said, okay. First verse. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna read it all. I'm gonna read some of it. He says, um, "Sometimes I brag like ho. Sometimes I'm real like pop. Sometimes I focus on the flow to show the skills I got. Sometimes I focus on the dough. Look at the bills I got. This is a message for some rappers trying to steal my spot. You niggas famous on the internet. I'm real life hot, homie. Get your weight up. Fake niggas get sprayed up. My verbal AK slay faggots." And I don't mean no disrespect whenever I say faggot. Okay, faggot. Don't be so sensitive. If you wanna get if you want to get fucked in the ass, that's between you and whoever else dick it is. Pause. Maybe that line was too far. Just a little joke to show how homophobic you are. And who can you blame? Okay. So you you heard what I said in that 
can kind of get to some people. And I'm gonna read some, I'm gonna read you something that he said when he explained explained that whole situation. When I when he when he he basically explained um the whole part when I said faggots, and I don't mean no disrespect whenever I say faggot, okay, faggot. Okay, I'm gonna explain that whole situation. He said in an interview. He kind of did some Tyler the Creator shit because we know Tyler the Creator. He does shit like this also. But um, he says in the interview, there will soon come a day. This is a quote now. There will soon come a day when people in general and rap artists specifically are going to have to answer for their past uses of the words faggot. Much like the grandfathers who are ashamed that they use the word nigger, nigger as kids. At a time... When public acceptance of gay rights is shown rightfully, hip hop culture in general are still battling with homophobia, not including myself. Rather than run from it, I chose to attack it playfully. Those lyrics are meant to make everyone uncomfortable for the sake of this very conversation. See, he pretty much explained the whole situation. If you guys don't understand it, then you know I don't I don't I don't understand. Now, the part where you say maybe that line was too far, just a little joke to show how homophobic you are. Um, it seemed like J. Cole, he pretty much tries to turn the table um, on listeners, suggesting if you found the previous few bars offensive, then, you know, you is use the homophobic person, okay? Now, some people may be like, what? What the fuck is he talking about? I don't know. But um, it could be possible J. Cole is pretty much pointing out how, you know, the hatred shown towards gays and hip-hop has, you know, maybe influenced listener into becoming homophobic. Now, I'm going to go into the third verse where he pretty much talk about the Illuminati. Now you think of the song of Illuminati, you want to think about Illuminati. He pretty much stated in this whole third verse, the beginning of the third verse, look nigga, I am not a part of the Illuminati. The Illuminati is real, but why would they want me? Why would they want, um, the, 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 the Illuminati is billionaire. Why would they want a young black fucking millionaire? Like, why would they want me? But anyway, he say, these next three bars is dedicated to the retards. Keep on asking me about the Illuminati. Is you stupid nigga, young black millionaire, old white billionaires? I'm sure... That they could do without me. And I ain't really into sacrificing human bodies. Okay. Now. Basically J. Cole is talking about in that first bar. You know. He calling out the people who basically. You know. Think since he signed with Rock Nation. That he's a part of Illuminati. Because a lot of people think. Jay Z is a part of Illuminati. Blah. 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 It's just sad and day and day and times where. Black people can't make money and just be considered putting in hard work over the years. But hey, it is what it is. J. Cole is pretty much staying like, niggas, I'm not Illuminati, okay? And then he goes until you say, is you stupid, nigga, young black millionaire, old white billionaire? I'm sure they can do without me. Cole is basically rebuttaling the Illuminati rumors. Um, saying basically like, they're old white billionaires, so why would, why would the Illuminati, you know, a disadvantaged group, with racism as uh, uh, you know on their agenda want a black rapper a black young rapper that's only a millionaire like why would they want me pretty much that's pretty much what he's saying and he said I ain't to sacrifice a human body now Illuminati allegedly sacrifices human bodies that's what everybody said I don't know and basically J. Cole he's not about that life so pretty much that's the the whole big thing about that song and I love that song it's just very dope he attacked the first track for to be a dope intro to the album. Pretty much, he did it well. Great, great, great opening, great opening track. Um, you know, J. Cole. You know, he's known for his great storytelling and themes and stuff like that. And he just basically followed up with, um, you know, um, the J and the Snakes. And like I said, he used the Outcast sample for of, of the artist storytelling. That's one of my favorite groups, Outcast. And he did justice to that beat. He did a great, great job. And then he moved on to his radio hit, pretty much, Power Trip, with Miguel. And if you guys listen to the song Dreams, that's pretty much he's telling the story. You can kind of connect the two stories. You just have to go back and listen. Then you can kind of connect what's going on. That song right there, I love that song. I play it all the time. Those three songs, pretty much, Illuminati, um, Power Trip, Jake and the Snakes, like, Shake and Snakes, like, I, just the whole album is just pretty much dope. I don't really have no best songs yet because the album is just so dope. I can just go on and on and, and, and pinpoint which, it's like every day I have something different. Now, um, you know, the concept of progress and, you know, and, and urgency to rise to the top, you know, both the game and his own, you know, became consistent themes throughout the whole, you know, the pretty much album, like I said before, you know, and then, um, you know, he, you know, he demonstrates J. Cole on, on his, I can't remember, the, let me go back, let me go back to the song real quick, let me go back to the song, 
Let me go back to the song. Hold on, people. Okay, the song with She Knows, you know, assisted by Amber Kaufman, he pretty much demonstrated his softer side, revealing his, um, you know, his trip. Tribulations in love, you know, everybody go through these ups and downs when it comes to females and, you know, when you're in love with somebody and stuff like that. So, you know, I love that song. And then, you know, tracks like Rich Niggas and, and, and Let Nas Down, that presents kind of like a dark darker side of J. Cole. You know, he pretty much exposing his musical insecurities on, the, on, on those two songs right there. Um... J. Cole, he pretty much explains his, his own disappoint his his self disappointment on the song Let Nas Down, which basically was inspired after his harsh cri um critic from one of his musical idols. Um you know the J. Cole, hey, this album was dope, man. He produced all sixteen tracks. Well, I think like two songs he didn't produce, or either he had some help on it, but he produced pretty much the whole album himself. His production is great. Um yeah, like I said, Timberland was on the drum lines of Born Center, and Kanye West, um, so from Symphonies is on Chain and Day, you know. But the standout song to me was pretty much Forbidden Fruits with Kendrick Lamar because they sampled a Tribe Called Quest electric rela relaxation. Now, I know he didn't think we forgot that they supposed to be doing an album together, so I hope that comes true. I think that'll be a dope, dope ass album, a classic album. It might be a classic album, but overall, um. When you when you listen to the whole Born Center the Born Center album, you're gonna get great production, great storytelling, good concepts. You know, um, you know, his wordplay is always point, lyrics are always on point. Um, pretty much, this is just he's just showing his growth and development, man. He, two good albums, you know, um, revealing his humble beginnings, channels his success, and 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 pretty much his bright future. Like he gives it all to you in this album. And, um, you know, it's a lot of standout songs that you can point from, like Crooked Smile. I love that smile. I mean, I say I love that smile. I love that song because he pretty much talked about, yes, I have this money to get my teeth fixed and, you know, stuff fixed on me with me. But I, I, I'm good with where I'm at. I love my body. I love how it looks. So I don't want to change anything about it. Basically, telling, basically sending a message out to the people. Like, if you feel insecure, really, like some people think you ugly and stuff like that, just be happy. Don't be sad. Be who you are progress and just move on in life like don't get down about it pretty much and if you got money hey if you can get things done if you want to go ahead if you don't be you just just do how you do but um you know this album was like i said it's dope i recommend you guys check it out um out of a five i give it a four and a half um but yeah i'm looking forward to see what else j, j, um, j. cole has to offer but as right now this is the best album so far that came out you know better than yeezus I gotta finish Mac Miller, but so far it's, it's still better than that. And but Jay Z coming out, and I don't know what's good jigging, man. Man, he probably can deliver a dope album, but um, we have to wait and see. But um, yeah, man, I can't really pinpoint like my favorite songs because the whole album is dope to me. Um, I, everybody else may think different, but anyway, man, go check it out. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Facebook. Make sure you guys go and sub to my main YouTube page, YFGM Blog TV, where I break down sport. I I give you sports news. Music, gaming, well, not necessarily music. That's why I started this page. But gaming, um, I covered the whole NBA playoffs, the finals. I gave recap, everything. Just go check it out, please. Sub to this page, like it, tell everybody about it. I'm new at this, and make sure you guys go and check out my new, my old, my previous page. Um, go to deadpip.com, livemixtapes.com, and download MG and Graham by CJ De Niro and Deuces. And remember, guys and girls, make sure you click the subscribe button, watch the previous videos, and like the videos.